is something going on with Caleb Williams. We're here with Dan Patrick. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry. My apologies for no video yesterday. Your boy is a little under the weather. Your boy is, you remember that Mucinex cartoon? That is currently me. This is my Jordan flu game. As the horrors persist, ladies and gentlemen, so do I. Could not talk yesterday. Couldn't do a video. Today, the voice is slightly back. And we're, you know, I'm not, I, I can't let y'all go two days without a video. I can't force y'all to listen to ESPN or Fox Sports or, or any of the local media. So here I am. Let's get to it. We're talking Caleb Williams. So the whole deal is recently, recently, there's been rumors that Caleb Williams wants equity in the team that drafts him. First of all, absolutely insane, insane request. Crazy request. Makes no sense. It's not even legal. The NFL put in a rule uh, like four months ago to where a team can't offer a player equity. We heard Tom Brady possibly would want equity in a team like the the Raiders. Uh, we heard Aaron Rodgers may want equity. So the NFL stepped in and said, nope, we're not doing that. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. We're not allowing players to get involved uh, while they're playing with owning a team. Obviously, some players do have ownership. Uh, John Elway with the Broncos. But a player coming out of college getting equity on his rookie deal is absolutely insane. So, on one hand, can't happen. But this is a bigger conversation of the shift in college athletics and because of NIL. We have talked at length about what NIL and what the new college athletic kind of landscape does. And this is a good example of that. Players have so much power, good players, have so much power it's almost kind of flipped everything. Think about back in the day. Back in the day, the way it worked was you did good in college. You tried to be the best player you could be to get drafted, to be a star in the NFL. Once you were a star, you may have movie deals, you may have whatever, and then as your results went, your star grew, right? It's flipped now. The move now is to get stardom with social media or whatever, go to college, continue being a star, non-results driven it doesn't even really matter if you're that good obviously being good helps but if you're a big enough star you can just kind of be average you can just kind of be above average and your stardom will take you the rest of the way then you already do your your marketing your movie deals your tv shows your commercials whatever then you go to the nfl where you have tons of money now you have tons of, of you know marketability but now it's flipped because once you get to the NFL or Major League Baseball or the NBA or whatever, it completely flips to where now it's 100% results driven, right? Like I'll take Shador Sanders, for example, at Colorado. Colorado could not win another game the rest of the season. Dion, Shador, Travis Hunter are still huge stars and none of their star power is going to take a hit. They're still going to get commercials. They're still going to get whatever deals, brand deals, what have you. And they probably will still get drafted highly because their star will carry them. But let's say they go to the NFL. And let's say Shador gets drafted, whatever, top 10. And let's say he's awful. And he his team's 0-8 to start. Let's say he's basically Bryce Young. All of a sudden, that stardom goes away. Because the NFL and professional sports is a completely results-driven situation. So what NIL has done is completely flipped how the the linear path an athlete can go on to marketability and, and become a pro. All questions that we have today, Seton O'Connor. Well, we might as well jump into what is probably the most fun story. Uh, do you believe Caleb Williams asked for equity in the team that drafts him? Yes or no? Okay. This surfaced in July. And my yeah, Dan, Dan actually has this correct. So the story is old and it's resurfacing now. So like I said, the NFL has already put the kibosh on this. The NFL has already said can't do it. So the idea, the actual request isn't even really part of the conversation. The conversation I want to have is more about the future of college athletics and you know the, this kind of idea of the leverage that players have. Mike Florio had some things. Uh, he had a couple of sources who talked about Caleb Williams' representatives were telling agents, whoever drafts him, that he wants equity in a team. And now Aaron Rodgers, according to Florio's post on Pro Football Talk, also asked the Jets. Now, it's a non-starter. Right. You can't get equity in a team. Can't do it. Cannot because do it. Because if that's yeah. the case, I can pay you 
a million dollars to be my quarterback, and I'll give you a piece of the team. So now all of a sudden I've circumvented the salary cap. Right, and that's the problem for good players at the end of their career. So someone like Tom Brady, someone who it has enough money to be in the conversation for those like ownership groups. Tom Brady can't buy a team, but he can certainly do like what Magic Johnson does where he's part of these bigger groups. So what would happen is a team like the Raiders would offer Brady that equity because he, he's worth it. He's certainly worth it. He's proven that. And he's got the money for after his career to be part of those groups. So like Dan said, you could circumvent the roster and you could basically pl- pay MVP level players, a la Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, whatever. You could pay them on rookie deals. And what do we know on this channel, ladies and gentlemen? Rookie deals is what it's all about. If you want to win a Super Bowl, you need one of two things. A quarterback on a rookie deal or an MVP quarterback. That's it. That's the that's the end of the conversation. So the NFL recognized that and said, hold on a second. This is not a good idea. And they said, nope, not going to happen. So I, I don't even know how it got this far. Now, could Caleb Williams, with his personality, ask for something like this? Maybe. I, I don't know him. Haven't had him on. But his agent should know. I can make one phone call. I, a, a text to a source right now and say, can a player, you can ask for it, but you're not going to get it. So why would you, if it's true, even ask the question? Because now it paints him in a different light. And- now that's true. So this was this is the first time I've heard people say, maybe, maybe Caleb Williams isn't going to go first overall. Because... If this is his personality coming in, I can certainly see where if a team has him and Drake May relatively similar as a prospect, this may swing them towards Drake May. If they're thinking, look, this guy wants to own the damn team, like we can't trust him to come in as a rookie and and you know be hungry or have that have what it takes as a rookie quarterback to want to learn and what to do, whatever, if he's already asking for uh equity in the team. So I could certainly see where teams now are, this will be a question. I can guarantee you that this will be a question. Teams ask Caleb Williams during their, their draft interviews. And now these message boards with some of the teams, you know, bears that fan base after they lost to Notre Dame. Oh, this is, you know, it feels like there's a sabotage going on right now. There's some saboteurs out there. This also happens where other teams like the second overall team, whoever it is, whoever's projected to be the second overall team, they may be releasing this stuff to the media in hopes that whoever the first overall team is lets Williams slide. So that also is at play. We talk about this all the time where media members are used by agents and teams. False information is released all the time to make stuff like this happen. This is not out of the realm of possibility. Because... If you ask for, how do you let this become public? But the, but the story doesn't go away. It was in July. Florio even says, look, it's a non-starter. You can't do this. But there were sources saying that his representatives were asking for this or inquiring about this. Yes, Seaton. It's the, the unfair part about it for Caleb Williams is that when you hear it, you're like, well, I could see it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he could also come out and say, Williams could also come out and say, I didn't say that. I don't want equity. I'm focused on football. Whatever team drafts me, I want to, you know, pro- prove I'm the starting quarterback. I want to be the best teammate I can be. This is, you know, he, he has the opportunity and certainly has the platform to come out there and, and defend himself. Eh, it doesn't seem like that much of a stretch, which is very unfair. But you're kind of like, yeah, I could see where maybe he would. Ask for that. Don't you think, though, that it feels like maybe somebody doesn't like him? Maybe another agent said something? I don't know. It feels like there's something going on here, but I don't think it's it's not possible to ask for a portion of the team. Yeah. I, I mean, it, that's the collective bargaining. I mean, that's just common sense. You can ask for it, but you, you can't get it. Because, therefore, I don't have to pay you $50 million a year. Let's say the Chiefs did that. Let's say Patrick Mahomes said, I, hey, I want to play. He's a good example, right? Perfect example where the Chiefs may say, you know what? Let's make him our quarterback for the rest of his career by giving him equity in the team. And we'll pay him 500000 
uh, a year in salary. Think about what the Chiefs could do with that money. I mean, like that would be that would be a really, really, really bad thing for the league. Now, also, you never know if Caleb Williams' team may have said something to the tune of, "Yeah, whatever team drafts Williams, eventually he's gonna want he's gonna have ownership in the team." They may be talking about like later on in his career, he'll be so good, the team will give him equity. It could be like a flippant, out of context kind of comment that the media has ran with of. Williams wants equity from day one, which, like, again, like Dan said, not possible. Peace. Okay. You know what? I'm going to um, pay you a million dollars, and then uh, the, the rest is just uh, your piece of the team. Uh, right? So now I just saved 40, $49 million. I can go out. I can keep Tyreek Hill. Yeah. I, it's silly. Silly. But it's out there, and it continues to stay out there. Yeah, Paul. Dan, if you go back to July, this story really never broke. Florio is not saying I'm hearing or this is a rumor. He said, per multiple sources, reps for USC quarterback Caleb Williams have been making it known to age to prospective agents that Williams wants partial ownership. So some type of rep, not the agent for Caleb Williams, because he do, can't have an agent yet completely. And, and oh, and also, he can have an agent. Yeah. yeah and he then an Aaron, he yeah. said about Aaron Rodgers. This story, I noticed it kind of bubbling up Monday morning on all these like Facebook team message boards and kind of half-assed NFL reporting sites that took Florio's story from July and repurposed it right after Caleb Williams lost. There's another story a couple weeks ago that was being getting the same treatment that Caleb Williams reportedly said, I'll only play for five teams. I went and dug and dug and dug, and there's no or- or origination for the story. It's just circling. It's just spinning. But all these... Yeah, but this happens all the time. Like, that's the dangers of social media. The dangers of free internet, basically, is that anybody can write anything at any time. How, how many times do you see, like... I know after games all the time, there's some channel out there that basically looks like ESPN and it'll post like breaking news released by whatever team, like whatever player did poorly for that team. Like like if Bryce Harper strikes out three times in the World Series, they'll post a picture of Bryce Harper and it'll be like, Bryce Harper traded breaking news. And it'll look, it'll look exactly like ESPN, but you have to remember, or you have to dig a little further to see that it's, it's not obviously ESPN. And people get fooled all the time. We see rankings. People people just release rankings. It's just everyone has a ranking now. Top 100 NBA players by who who the hell knows? You know, all of a sudden you're seeing, wow, this this random list has Kawhi Leonard second overall. And then you do a little bit of digging, and you're like, oh, well, this is Kawhi Leonard's mom's blog. This makes sense now, you know. These different fan bases, Bears fan bases, uh, Patriots fan bases are seeing this story with no really corroboration and just lighting up Caleb Williams. Who does this guy think he is? Yeah, until they draft him, and then they'll be like, hey, yeah, sure. Caleb, come on yeah. in, save our franchise here. But it feels like there's something else at play here. There could I've be. been around for 40 years. Yeah, there could be. And it just feels like there's something like you know, almost internet sabotage here with Caleb Williams and coming off the loss against Notre Dame, that there's this vitriol there, and I'm going, man, I, I don't know if he started it. It never should have gotten to this point. You can inquire. I mean, I, I guess I could have asked for a piece of ESPN when I was there and and had a better chance of getting a piece of ESPN than these guys do a piece of a franchise there. But yeah. if you had been straight out of headline sports and been like, yeah, I'll go to Bristol, but first I want equity. Yeah. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> or there's only five networks that I would work for. Mm, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, Florio clarified. Okay, but this is th- that's kind of exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, back in the day, Dan Patrick would have had zero audience. Dan Patrick, like going from wherever he was, headline sports or whatever they said, to ESPN, right? He would have had no no audience at all. He would have been happy to get the ESPN job. But now, now, if like Pat McAfee, when he signed his deal with ESPN, his audience is huge. His audience is arguably, or probably, or I would say guaranteed, guaranteedly, if that's a word, his audience was bigger than ESPN's, or at least the shows on ESPN. So in that conversation, he probably could have said, "I want to, I want producer credits on my show, or I want, uh, you know, I want to own the rights to blank." Like all of a sudden, then it changes the conversation. That's what I'm saying with these athletes: is that before they were just amateur athletes entering the in, entering the pros. Now some of these players, guys and girls, are legit superstars being drafted you are drafting 
and we haven't even seen it yet. I've said this a million times. Caleb Williams is not the biggest college football star we've ever seen. Caleb Williams, he's shit. He, <clears throat> excuse me. Didn't mean to curse, ladies and gentlemen. He's not even top. He's not even top 10 as far as like big time star. Like Johnny Manziel, Tim Tebow, you know, even if you go back to the USC teams of Matt Liner at Reggie Bush. Like imagine Manziel, if NIL was was in his time, he would have been one of the biggest stars in the world. He is he was hanging out with Drake. Okay, like he he was everywhere. Tim Tebow was everywhere. Absolute superstar. Absolute superstar. If you go even further back to the Brian Bosworths, you know, the, these guys who like Brian Bosworth went from Oklahoma to movies, TV shows. Like he was immediate. You know, like the it, it's we haven't even seen the worst of this. So what do you do? What will it look like when you've got a guy and you're like like if you're drafting a, a player who's 19, 20 years old, quarterback, who's made 50, 60 million dollars in his college career, is it acting in movies and TV shows, has brand deals, whatever? And you're drafting that player in. Because part of your draft process will be this guy is a huge superstar or girl. This guy or girl is an enormous superstar. We are drafting a huge audience. We are drafting marketability. We are drafting immediate, immediate brand exposure. We're immediately relevant. Like you think about some of the good quarterbacks who have been drafted in the past, and they're just guys like Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan was just a guy, played at Boston College, just a quarterback. He was good, but no, you didn't know anything about Matt Ryan. Now, Shador Sanders, by the time he gets drafted, we will know everything about him. We'll, we'll have seen every inside detail of his life through social media and through brand endorsements and through TV shows and through documentaries and through uh, you know, HBO specials and, and everything else. I mean, we've got players whose websites are offering merchandise sales during primetime games. We are in a totally different universe right now in college athletics because NIL drives it. NIL doesn't drive pro sports. Pro sports is driven by results and their contract. College, total opposite. Total opposite. Name, image, and likeness. It is all about how marketable you are. That is number one. Results on the field, secondary. That's, that is how it is right now in college athletics. Five this, though, didn't he? And he's going to join us a little bit later on. Yes. Yeah. yes. He, it's probably just as good a, a lesson as like the internet is going after him, but it's more like the algorithm of the internet that's attacking him rather than uh, like actual reporters. Okay. Yeah, Paul. But then this story goes from that to if you look on Twitter, there's reputable websites retweeting Florida's original story <laughs> now. It's like it, it's stoked up again and it's getting to mainstream media. And it's what's going to happen to Caleb Williams. It's it's going to become a fact to a lot of people that he asked for partial ownership of whatever team drafts him without any- until until he discredits it until he answers the question. Any proof of that? Because most of you who are listening or watching are or both probably don't take the time to really you know go deep on something. You'll hear something. Somebody will say I'm hearing or hey just rumors out there. Well, once you start it, now it becomes fact. Yeah, that's just the way it works in our business or with our listeners or with our viewers where you just hear, hey, I'm hearing. Well, that doesn't mean anything. It's when you say I've got sources on this. That's when it's real. But, hey, uh, you know, whispers, rumor, innuendo, speculation. Those aren't reports. But when they get into print and you see them, then all of a sudden it becomes fact. Yes, Eden. I don't believe this story at all. So when I was, so if y'all don't know this, before all of this, I was a newspaper reporter. I covered crime and breaking news as a newspaper reporter in South Mississippi. And I was there when there was the big shift in like print journalism, where you wrote a story, people read it the next morning in the newspaper, and social media, and trying to be first on Twitter, and trying to be first to break the story. You weren't concerned about the facts. 
you were concerned about just getting it out there. And that's basically exactly what they're talking about here. And a good example would be if I'm sitting in the newsroom, if I'm sitting in the newsroom and I hear a rumor that somewhere is on fire, like let's say the local Walmart is on fire. I hear that rumor. Some news stations and some, certainly some people on Twitter will just say, uh, hearing now, you know, in, in all in all caps or a rumor or sources and that somehow kind of protects them from possibly being wrong and if you say sources walmart on fire on whatever road you can't go back and then be like hey guys look so double checked uh the walmart is actually not on fire because once people see that and read that even if it's a source or a hearing or a rumors or a whatever they're going to believe it's on fire. And so that's what we're seeing now in journalism, in sports journalism or, or whatever, even with celebrities, is someone will say, they won't, do the, they won't take the time to see if it's true. They'll just say sources or hearing or rumor or whatever, and then say Caleb Williams wants equity in the NFL team because they, they, are, they are so concerned with being first to the story. And they're so concerned with getting the clicks and getting the likes and getting the engagement from the story. And that's something else that journalism is suffering from right now, where you get paid by impressions, you get paid by clicks, you get paid by all of that. You do not get paid for quality. You do not get paid for being right. You do not get paid for any of that stuff. It's up to really the creator to care about the quality and all that stuff. But if you, I mean, how many, how many times do you see it on YouTube where people are just putting up clickbait titles or clickbait thumbnails where the thumbnail has nothing to do with the video and the title has nothing to do with the video, but it's grabby and it's clicky because all they care about is that number of, of views. All they care about is the impressions. You know, so this is certainly something we are battling in, in all forms of, of content. The what that he asked for equity in a team. Do you think he said I'd only go to five teams? Uh, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's not that crazy to me. But yeah. to be a college player, I mean, like, well, whatever too. team I want, I want a piece of yeah. is insanity. Yes, absolute insanity. But wouldn't somebody say right away if you have one of your representatives or your agent, and they're going to go, hey, you know what? Um, he wants to get a piece of the Chicago Bears. That's when somebody should say, yeah, no, no, say they, don't, don't yeah, say that. They, they should say it's not there. true. It's not possible. Yeah, maybe they did in some way. The only five teams thing, that's another part of the NIL that'll be, a, that'll be real, is that if you have somebody like, like Caleb Williams, I'm not saying he did this, but I'm saying someone like him, where he's playing in California, star quarterback in Los Angeles, hugely marketable. If the, I'm trying to think who, like the Indianapolis Colts, if they were lined up to draft him, he might say, I'm not playing there. I'm absolutely not doing that. I'm too big of a brand. I'm too big of a whatever. I want to be in a major media market. I want to do whatever. And he'll hold out for like Eli Manning did or, or, or whoever else. That has happened before. And I can certainly see that happening again. Where a, if a player is a big enough star and they want the commercials and the movies and the TV deals and the, all that stuff, they're not going to go to the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, they're not going to go to the Cleveland Browns. They're, they're going to say, I'm pl- I'll play for whatever, Atlanta, Houston, New York, New York, Los Angeles, Miami. I'll play for those teams. But I'm not, I'm not playing for a small media market. That will come into play because of NIL. And that'll be in every, in every sport. NIL and the idea that these college athletes are superstars is going to negatively affect small market teams and the pros. For sure. 100%. Hundred percent, because small market teams, because those players aren't aren't going to want to go there, and they do have the power to hold out. Uh, and you know, like like Eli Manning. I mean, he's a perfect example. Held out, didn't want to go to the Chargers, went to the biggest media market in the world. Like like, well, what about equity? And they're like, uh, no, okay, and moved on. And then that's what gets leaked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, if, I, I don't know if he's gone to the top five picks and been like, I need five percent ownership. Yeah. Or I'm not coming here. But doesn't it feel like there's some sabotage going on here? After the loss to Notre Dame, you know, his fingernails painted, 
Uh, I don't know. Do you think it's more likely that he's being sabotaged or one of his representatives asked a stupid question? <laughs> I think it's more likely that a team that wants to draft him leaked the information hoping he could possibly slide. I think that is definitely a possibility. <laughs> well, hey, look, I ask stupid questions for a living. What are you being sabotaged for in July before, you know what I mean? Like the timing of the saboteurism doesn't make any sense to me. It does because it's right after Notre Dame. It's right after the loss. So now it's like, this is probably when his brand is most weak. So if we leak this stuff on top of a bad performance, maybe those first overall, second overall, third overall teams, if they hear this and they see the bad performance, maybe this will start the seeds of doubt and maybe he'll slide down the draft board. It's a perfect time to start that. Is right after he loses to Notre Dame and, and right after he starts throwing interceptions, basically. I mean, it, it's... The only other time that would make sense or would be better is like the lead up to the draft. Well, but it's happening right now. But only because the internet is a weird place. <laughs> like this, these, these bots dug up an old story and are recirculating it. I mean, that's what the internet is now. Yeah. Yeah, Marv. If you're Caleb Williams, do you hold a press conference and say, no, I did not say any of this. This is ridiculous. I did not. You don't have to hold a press conference, but you can You can just, I mean, he, he could just tweet it out. He could make a YouTube video. I mean, an Instagram live, I mean, whatever. Like, like these, these people have like the most powerful platforms in the world. All he has to do is make one tweet and say, didn't say that. And like I said, say, I'm, I'm worried about being a Hall of Fame quarterback. I'm worried about winning Super Bowls. I'm not worried about equity. Uh, you know, whatever. Like, he doesn't need a presser. He, he just needs to get something out there. I'd ask for equity <laughs> of that team. Just to get it out there. Um, well, I don't know if he speaks with the media each week. I don't know if USC makes him available. You know, no, Lincoln, Ry Lincoln Riley's no. available uh, each College week. Players but I don't do know. After the game, their next game, is, is people going to ask him about it? I'm going to assume. If you're Caleb Williams, I think you want to get that story out there that, look, we all know that you can't ask for equity in a team. And I would never do that. And I want to be, whoever drafts me, I want to go there. Like, let's. I mean, we're already seeing kind of the dangers of this, like with Libby Dunn at LSU. She mentioned how she can't even go to class. She can't go to class because people stalk her. They'll follow her around campus. They'll, you know, be creeps or whatever. Like, you know, back in the day, you, college athletes were superstars on their campus. But when you got, whatever, 10 million followers on whatever platform, and you're that big of a celeb, being on a college campus is impossible. Anyone can be on that campus. Anyone can follow you around. You don't like you can't be one of the biggest celebrities in college athletics and live in a dorm, you know? You can't be Livy Dunn and go eat in in the in the cafeteria. And that's when social media and all that gets coupled with name and image of likeness and gets coupled with athletics and we're in like a perfect storm where it's starting to unravel it's starting to get to where it's just not going to work you're not going to be able to be a student athlete and be the celebrity this high level of celebrity it's not going to work you're not going to be able to again you're not going to be able to be livy dunn you're not going to be able to go to a 400 attendance uh history class you know, you're not going to be able to do group projects like like a, like, a, like students used to do in the past. It's just not going to work. It's not going. It's not going to happen. So, it, it's an interesting conversation. I'm very worried about college athletics. I think what will happen. I think what should happen is they basically get turned into minor leagues. They get turned into the minor leagues. They're pretty much professionals, and the student athlete, which which hasn't existed for years. Is pretty much gone. We're going to have to protect the sport. We're going to have to protect the players. We're going to, have to protect the professional sport leagues from the greed that is the TV networks, the agents, the marketing teams, all that stuff. So it's it's interesting. But let me know in the comments below what you think, where you see the future of this going. Uh, you can, or, or let me know about Caleb Williams. Do you think he actually did ask for equity, uh, which I highly doubt? What do you think about where we're going? with the name, image, and likeness, or go down in the comments below and uh, 
you know, congratulate me on somehow making it through this video. Absolutely mucinexed out of my mind. Absolutely Claret and D'd out of my mind. Basically freebasing Claret and D at this point. Uh, you know, tip of the cap getting through this. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.